Hello again, and this is going to be another tutorial about the best automotive meters. Last time we did the Fluke 87, we're upgrading now to the Fluke 287, true RMS. And as you see, the same functions, but some additional functions. That's what makes it the greatest. Now, the input and pins, like I explained to you, is more than 10 mega ohm which means it doesn't load down the circuit that you're measuring. Very important. I took both of them. First thing is you want to make sure that the leads are good. I shorted them together on ohms scale. And as you see, 0.14 ohms. That's very good. Now, if it measures 1 ohm, that's not good. You want it to measure 0 0.2, 0 0.3, not 1 ohm. That's way too much. So therefore, always make sure the leads and make sure you ohm everything together. That's the first thing. Now, let's take this apart. Now, you're going to have overload, out of limit. Now, the basic functions, and there's more functions on this than the other one. You have a mini max where... You have, let's say you have a fluctuating voltage or ohms, and it fluctuates up and down. Where And you want the minimum, let's say we're going from 100 to 120. So therefore, let's say I want 100, and I want 120, and I want the average of those two. It'll give me the average, which will be 110. So that's important when you have something that's fluctuating up and down, and it just bothers you, and you want something st more steady. Now, the other, other ones, as you see, volts, volts, volts DC is just like any other meter. Volts DC, auto range. That means once you put on volt, this is not like the other meter that I showed you. You don't have to select the proper range, 20, 200, 2000. This auto range does it for you. That's the great great features about digital multimeters. The other ones, this is DC, obviously, volts DC. This is AC over here. Now, for volts AC, it's going to measure RMS. We spoke about it in another video, root mean square, the effective value. Just like you measure 120 volts AC, that is RMS. But true RMS means if you have something other than a sine wave, and on other meters, you're going to get, you're going to get inaccurate uh, measurements. This will give you the proper measurements. Let's say you want to measure some square wave or something. It'll give you the proper, the proper measurements of that. Now, other features are, if you want to measure a diode, it'll tell you the diode, which is in volts DC. So let's say the videos that we did about transistors, a common emitter, so the base emitter would measure around 0 0.6, 0 0.65 volts, and you can measure it, for, it's called forward bias. In reverse, if you remember, it would be reverse bias, it would be out of limit or out of range, because it's high ohms. The other ones are A, uh, uh, amps, DC, uh, and uh, A and DC, and, and microamps. But the nice feature is, it warns you that you don't have the leads in the proper uh, uh, sockets because the leads are supposed to be in this one if you want to measure amps. This is for amps. See, com. This is volts, ohms, and diode, this one. The black one is always the common. The red one is always for volts. And this is a cat three, up to 1,000 volts. And so now, this, if you go over here, put this one over here, you can measure 400 milliamps fused. If you want to measure higher than that, you would put it over here, <clears throat> 10 amps over here in this one. But at least it warns you that the leads are in the wrong, see, connected incorrectly. So you don't blow out the fuse. Other things, you have capacitance and other uh, things that you can do. You can have range. So let's say range. In other words, it'll sh it, you can do it manually. It'll give you the decimal point will move, will shift for you. Let me put on the light. So, so as you can see, 
it'll give you as many decimal points as you want. But I always usually uh, usually leave it on auto, and I'm happy with that. <coughs> Other thing is, if you see over here, menu, save, and all these things set up, it lets you, if you can see it, AC plus DC, sometimes you have, sometimes you have, as you see over here, these are what you are able to choose. If you choose this, you'll be choosing this one. See, volts AC, see, riding on top of a DC. And if you go back, riding on top of a DC, then you have a DC, top of an AC, all these fancy things about... For automotive, you don't really use so many of these things. And if you, there's many, many other things. So, as you can see, AC plus DC. So, anyway, hold is a nice thing. Let's say when you measure something and you really can't hold the probes there uh, that long. So, when you put hold, it'll hold that value, as you see. 0.069 is the value that it's holding, like in memory. It'll hold it. I usually put it on hold if I can't. If I'm doing a lot of things at one time, so as you can see, there's a lot of a lot of things that you can store in this meter. But for automotive, remember you also have hertz. Yeah, uh, you also have hertz and other things that you can uh, let's see. If you go like this, menu again, uh, hertz over here. You have to move this down. And then you have the choices that are up here. Hertz, percentage, uh, duty cycle, milliseconds. It'll give you the milliseconds if you have a pulse. It'll give you the frequency. If you want to measure frequency, sometimes you need it in the automotive. So anyway, all these functions are what's available on this. a powerful um, instrument. And I'm going to make a video now going under the hood. And for the, for the lighting... And I'm going to use this. So hopefully, I hope you enjoyed this video.